All right, guys. Hey, just kind of a short video here. Primary tillage in a soil health scenario. Like that, doesn't that kind of sound silly? Um, if we were doing primary tillage, wouldn't that like, you know, defeat the purpose of soil health? Wouldn't that just ruin everything that we've tried to build? I'd say absolutely yes. Uh, <laughs> we're not here to both smoke up each other's skirts. We're here to have an honest conversation. I don't believe it would, you know, if you were here, you did soil health practices for some years, I don't believe one pass of primary tillage is gonna take you back to ground zero, but it is gonna set you back a little bit. But on day two, you're already back into soil health and you can keep improving that field. Uh, if we got to the point where you think you need because of compaction, uh, with your compaction probe, you found issues or the field is just that tore up, that you need to do primary tillage, you're better off to do the primary tillage, start over, take the great reset, and continue on your journey of soil health, rather than one, why would you live with a field that that's rough? You know, if it's that rough, why would you even tolerate being out there bouncing around? And if it's that compacted, how much are you honestly moving soil health forward anyhow? Um, without much oxygen, not much life. I'm sorry, I didn't make the rules. And I don't think any of us, I've never heard of any of us signing a contract that thou shall not till thy own soil ever again in the soil health journey. Because ultimately our goal is to make beautiful crops. <sighs> Primary tillage is, uh, it, it, it can alleviate compaction temporarily. It can help, I mean, it really moves a lot of soil. So it can, it's great to, to reclaim a field and stuff, but I don't want somebody to misconstrue this video and be like, see, primary tillage ain't so bad. Like it's bad, that's why it's at the end of our list of tools to have. Uh, for those of you watching in Iowa, misconstrue would be to misunderstand. Uh, we have crop rotation, we have cover crops, we have no-till, we have secondary finish tools, you know, the shallow engaging ones, a disc, a, a mulch finishers, um, field cultivators, vertical till, uh, your coulter strip till bars, and then we've got, you know, your, your shank strip till bars, non-disturbance rippers, and then you've got primary tillage tools over here. Uh, why on earth would we need to do them? Uh, old sod is my enemy and compaction is my enemy over here. Old sod ground over here is typically really poor fertility, very poor pH, soil is somewhat compacted or very prone to be compacted, poor drainage, and, and then you're dealing with that sod mat. That sod mat can really be a nightmare. Knowing what I know now, if somebody offered me another sod farm to rent, on day one, I'm pouring on turkey litter, lime, potassium. On day two, we are mole board plowing. On day three, we are drilling or seeding our cash crop and putting in cover crops and starting our soil health journey from that point. Another scenario is in an emergency situation like a winter like this, uh, where you get freeze thaw, freeze thaw. Maybe we lose some alfalfa acres. So we got, but we got some old pastures or something. Let's take, let's go to them old pastures, roll that sod over. Again, let's get some fertility out there first, roll that sod over and get some alfalfa reestablished so we can feed our cattle. Uh, in a planned crop rotation, you'd be like, well, I'll follow soybeans and and just hit it with the finisher ahead of alfalfa and we're good to go. I don't know about you, but mother nature really does not listen to my plans very well at all. The other scenario, so the cows. The field that the cows are on was rough before the cows got there. Before the cows got there, we knew we were gonna have to hit that with the finisher. So it was very easy to bring the cows there to save the good fields. Now going into this winter, I did not expect a mud season at fall, a mud season at Christmas, a mud season early February, and then we'll have a normal mud season come uh, end of March into April when the frost comes out again. Uh, you know, that one's normal. The one in March and April, that one we expect. We don't expect cows to be in mud in, in Christmas and February. Them, them were unexpected. Uh, so 
for us, my my greatest tool is the strip till bar is that I can get down, you know, eight inches rather easily with that shank to alleviate any compaction the cows are going to make. So on that field, next spring, we hit it with the finisher to make it smooth and drivable and manageable. And then we hit it with the strip till bar to alleviate the compaction, create a wonderful seed zone. And also strip till is our nutrient management tool. Um, so we can do that. But what if you didn't have a shank strip till that would allow you to do that in the spring? If all you had was no till or full till behind them cows, you're gonna be full tilling. I, I would. Absolutely, I would. No way would I put a cash crop into that scenario with the soil that compacted and that rough. No way. Why? Why would you even do that? So you primary till it to clean it up. <clears throat> At that point, I would suggest looking for a shank strip till bar so you don't have to keep pulling out the primary tillage because the primary tillage is, why, is a major reason of why the soil is very prone to compaction to begin with because it destroys the soil structure and and stuff like that. Uh, another great example is this fall behind the combine during during harvest we had a foot of rain on nine inches of topsoil. Um, yeah so, so you know 10 gallons of water in a nine gallon bathtub you do the math it was wet. Half the farm we we could we could no-till and strip-till. We, we, we could make it work. There was such little damage on on the makers that will be just fine. Some of the other acres that are fairly new in our soil health journey did not have that much soil structure built up yet. And so they kind of fell into the combine making some ruts. Again, if I didn't have the shank strip till to alleviate compaction, or I was on a different farm and you know somewhere else in the country that the combine went down more than four inches, uh, you know, it wasn't too many years ago uh, a mile east of that field, uh, I had the ladder of the combine dragging from one end to the other. It took two chisel plow passes and three very big aggressive disc passes to make that field smooth again. Um, granted, all the primary tillage is why that field was such a mud mess to begin with, <sighs> but it took that much work to smooth that field up behind the combine. And so, so luckily I can get by with the tools I have without having to reach for primary tillage. Uh, back to the alfalfa is in an emergency situation as well, uh, what if the field you wanted to go to was corn stubble? I've no-tilled alfalfa into soybean or corn stubble and it worked very well. Um, no tilling alfalfa into corn stubble to become a pasture for its first year or two. Fantastic, would work awesome. I would do that again. No tilling alfalfa into corn stubble to then become your hay field and retail hay. Never, ever, ever again in my life will I do that. One, the field became very rough, but the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is that that corn residue was drug across, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, the cows will eat the corn residue. And if we bailed up corn residue, they'll eat that bale. And cows eat alfalfa. So them two should go together just fine. Except by the time you got done running across that field, a lot of them stocks had a lot of contact with the soil. And when you raked it all up, you brought a tremendous amount of ash into the bales. And we actually had people, when you test your feet, are like, nope, the ash content is way too high for me. We can't take it. And you're like, well, I'm not losing money to, to try to be healthy. So in an emergency situation, if I had to go into a corn stock field to seed down a new alfalfa field, I will be mow board plowing it. I'm sorry, I said what I said. Um, so there you have it, I'm just gonna end right there. We've got our list of tools that we have on our farm. We've got some scenarios as to what could damage your fields enough to make you pull out the primary tillage. And we know that primary tillage 
is the root of all evil and, and not a fixer. Um, so we want to use it as less, least little as possible, but it is an emergency tool that is there for us. Uh, not even an emergency tool. It's a tool that should stay fairly rusty, but once in a while, let's get it out before it completely freezes solid. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be awesome to farm in a part of the country where uh, I could just never, ever, ever have to do that again in my life. But that's not the world I live in. And I'm sure most of you guys are in a similar boat, especially early on in our soil health journeys. Talk to me 10 years from now, and I'll probably be laughing back at this video and being like, ah! I can't believe I didn't know about this, this, and this. Like, what was I thinking? Um, and so you guys let me know what you think and uh, your experiences, and we'll go from there. Thank you very much for watching.